Hello everybody, it's Kenneth from the Archives here with another video dipping into our collections and delving into Dundee's history. Today I'm going to be looking at railways again, but this time I'm going to be looking at railways and railway structures that were never built. Our collections contain an awful lot of records relating to railways and railway companies in Dundee, and they feature many plans. Now many of these record railways which were built and in many cases are still there. But we do have the odd example of a railway plan that never came to fruition. So first up is this massive plan. And this is really big. It's difficult to get it all on screen. It's even more difficult to get out uh, physically because it is a very, very big plan. Uh, and this is a plan of the Dundee and Northern Junction Railway. It dates from 1847. Now, you've probably never heard of the Dundee and Northern Junction Railway, and that's because it was never actually built. It comes from the period of railway mania, where there were a lot of schemes that were speculated, got to the planning stage, in some cases they even started building, but in the end just didn't happen. And this is one of these. So what was it? Well, it was a plan to create a railway linking Dundee with the Aberdeen Railway to the north would have created a line between Dundee and Forfar, and also it would have provided the Edinburgh Northern Railway to the south with access through Dundee and Brotty Ferry to Aberdeen, basically creating what would eventually become the East Coast Main Line in a different form and years earlier than it did actually happen. Here we can see some of the details of the plan. We can see um, in this bit looking at Dundee that in Dundee, the line would have started out running parallel to the Dundee and Arbroath Railway. It would have then continued to Craigie, where it would have headed north and through the bleach fields on into Forfar. There would have also been a junction coming down from Forfar, linking to the Dundee and Arbroath Railway at Brody Ferry. And you can see part of that plan here. It would have gone through the Claypots area, where the old pond that's now the park in Claypots was, um, the railway would have come down that way. Now, it was never built. Uh, there's various reasons for this. Money, practicality, the fact rival schemes and rival companies were coming up with their own ideas meant it just wasn't viable in the end. So it didn't happen. A perennial question, though, for Dundee was the idea of having a central station. If we look at the map from the 1840s, we can see that Dundee had three routes in, none of which were connected up. We had the New Tower Railway coming in from the north, we were about to get the Perth Railway coming in from the west, and we had the Arbroath Railway coming in from the east. And how were you going to connect these? Well, eventually the New Tower problem was solved by creating the deviation around the law, so it joined up with the Perth Railway. And eventually you were able to get links between the east and the west stations. Initially, via a street railway which goods could be run through. But that still left you with terminal stations and you couldn't really run passenger trains through and have st stopping services. So over the years, and again after the Taybridge came in and Taybridge station, it got even more discussion, there were ideas that we should have some sort of central station. One proposal would have seen large chunks of the Murray Gate being demolished for a station there. But most later proposals centred on doing something under the docks. So we have got the Dock Street Tunnel, which linked the Taybridge line to the Dundee and Arbroath, and also provided the Caledonian with access. So it was suggested, why not build a big station and wind this tunnel? And this is a plan from 1896, which was one of the proposals to do it. As you see, we would have had, it's not actually that different, the Dundee stations that exist today, although bigger. It would have had B platforms on either end, which Dundee uh, current station doesn't have, and it would have had main lines going through, and therefore would have provided access. Now, this wasn't really a novel concept. Many other towns where you had multiple railway companies had one station. Perth is an obvious example. In Aberdeen, the Great North of Scotland Railway had originally terminated uh, Aberdeen Waterloo, the South at a station near the current Aberdeen station at Guild Street, and eventually the two companies had got together to have a joint railway which runs through the current Aberdeen station. So why shouldn't have Dundee done likewise? Well, for whatever reason, it didn't happen. Again, cost is a factor, 
the amount of work that would have been involved in this project. So it didn't happen. But here again, we've got an idea of what it might look like. And of course, it would have had big implications because it would have had to fill in large parts of the William IV and Earl Grey docks, which of course eventually happened anyway. Uh, there was even later discussions about having a big grand station for Dundee. Uh, and this is one of James Thompson's sort of schemes that he came up with over the years. Uh, and in it, it's quite interesting because you do actually see a grand railway station just behind his proposed civic centre. This dates from about 1918 and, of course, again, was never realised. The last one I'm going to talk about today is one that often gets people interested because we very often show people the maps from the Dundee directories. And this one comes from 18. And on it, you can see a dotted line. And the dotted line is the proposed Dundee and Suburban Railway. Now, the Dundee Suburban Railway, of course, was another one which was never built. You look at the top, you can see that just beyond Lockheed, the new tile line would have had a junction going off. And that junction would have led to a railway which would have gone through Coldside, um, Smithfield, through just the south of Clementon Road, through Maryfield, past the ponds, and eventually would have joined the Dundee and Arbroath line and run in from there back into the city centre, effectively creating a circular route, which would have allowed trains to run from Dundee East round the circle to Dundee West, or do a complete circle going through the Dock Street Tunnel and using Taybridge as a station. Now, again, it didn't happen. Uh, this proposal was made a number of times over the years. Uh, it would have been largely built on viaducts, so it would have been quite expensive. The big reason it probably didn't happen was by this time, railway mania is coming towards the end. And in terms of a town of Dundee size, that you have to question whether such a network would have been successful. The other issue is Dundee was by now developing a very substantial tram network and electric trams were on the way. So there was competition to the railways and it's unlikely this proposal could have ever been made to pay its way given the costs and the competition there would have been. OK, so that's just a few of the proposed Dundee railway schemes that never happened that we have records relating to. There were, of course, other schemes, for example, the plan to have a railway running through Abernight to Stanley that would have connected Dundee with the Highland Railway and given us a direct link to Inverness in the north. So I hope you found that video interesting. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk again soon.